comp. Look how many champions can all in. Yes. This is an yes. all in comp with the Siri just sprinting around in the back line, shooting people down. I really like it. I think it makes a lot of sense um, picking the Alistar here with the rest of them to take the dragon. He's only been on it for 20 seconds. It's almost down already. Very nice. Beautiful play by Gilius. Really nicely done. Brock's exceptionally well explained as well. Fight into. That was a lot of yeah. Shyvana damage too. Oh, Gilius flashes for this one. Flame Breath as well as the Burnout. Turning, biting, get the chomps on. Gilius may have donated first blood. Looking for a bit of action in the mid lane. Bot lane just comes by to push out because the Herald is up. They know oh, that. Oh, two man knock up. Treats is the one that's in trouble now. Neon remains untouched. VTO gets another for Misfits. The Herald is secured as well. VTO with a second kill. And Surge is forced to flash for his life. I mean. So far, that Silas blind pick is definitely not paying off. And while I can respect going for the comfort pick, look at oh. that and damage. What a champion. While I can respect going for the comfort pick, it just sets up VTO so perfectly. But obviously, we'll see how the rest of the game plays out. Now, we need to keep our eye on Sansara, who's standing outside the dragon. Gonna be starting that up. Could potentially be another fight. Ooh. But that's top lane action again, Trevor. Yeah, the knob pulls Irrelevant backwards. By the way, Irrelevant's doing that much damage with Lucy Boots, a Doran Shield, a Ruby Crystal, and a Cloth Armor, right? So the Dragon's Descent form, plus the Burn on the Flame Breath, is melting through Gen X's mini gnar. It is a lot of damage, that's for sure. It's looking Boxer, so what is the communication like in SK when they hit tab? They look at the lead that's not only have been accrued in the gold, but look at the items. Both of those players are gonna find another kill to accelerate ahead. You know, I was SK, on they really need Surtis and Jezu to do well. That's really so sort of your primary damage sources. You've gnar and Vi to set them up, and Surtis is low. He's pinned against the wall. His presence does not hold steadfast, but the verdict is die, die, die! Two more for VTO, one more for Zanzara. Seven to zero at 15, Broxa. At this point, I'm uh, I'm just standing here thinking what it's like being a player in this scenario. You're in this game that has such huge implications of, on whether or not you're going to make it to playoffs. You see 15 they minutes. full send too often. That's where SK can look to punish. But again, the, the, the point I want to go back to, this draw about one particular thing, because when I take a look at this mid lane, if you look at the items, that's uh, thrift store shopping versus two fully completed items. And once again, a member of VTO, of Misfits, is under some pressure. Three members of SK jumping forward, Brox. They're gonna find it relevant as well. Now, all of a sudden, here comes Neon and Zanzar. I mean, SK threw VTO to get a pentakill this game, right? What are the chances? So, I feel like if I don't put the percentages high enough, it's not really a cool prediction, right? Okay. It's kind of boring. So okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say 90% chance we two against a pencil. 90% for I'm, a I'm pencil. going in, you know. Go hard or go home. Cast a curse of note. Not gonna look at I love how I say that oh. when the guy almost dies right away. That is literally the power of the shoutcaster, Mike. Gen X gets taken out despite standings oh. because yesterday, SK took down Astralis today. Mis uh, Misfits took down Rogue. Hence the reason Rogue not sitting in first any longer. But to get that additional step up with how close these standings are, I mean, it's crazy to think that a Fnatic is just potentially misfits. SK, like, four of these teams are not making playoffs. And listen to that! Berlin, I love it. But that is exactly what these teams are playing for in SK. Gonna get jumped on once again, pinned into the wall. Keeper's verdict is up. Sirtis not gonna be able to escape for now. Treats by some time. Unbreakable will is up. Dragons to send forward. Neon gets the first, gets the second, gets the tower. Shelly's not done. Charge, charge, charge. And they're gonna keep pushing. Does Shelly get a third? If Shelly gets a third, no! Taken out this time round by the Ultra Shark laser. Gen X will throw the Gnar out. By the way, uh, 204 games on record here for Certus. Of the 204 mended from just a few few mistakes from SK. Well, again, they literally just brought in some sorrow. Yeah. Doesn't look like Has it right been now. the case. And look at this, 23 minutes after Misfits infatuation with Baron. They've started it, they've defended it. Gilius is pushed away. VTO has got one. 90% chances. Baron is secured there by Zanzara. VTO's looking for the second. Will not be able to find, he's shut down. Taking out percentage chance down to 80 is what I'll say. Irrelevant stepping forward with the burnout. Nod into the wall. 
Yesterday, Misfits tried time and time again to secure the Baron against Rogue. It did not work out. Today, on the first attempt, very different scenario. To do to win these team fights, this is why you picked Vi to counter the Akali to take him down, especially with his build, because oh. he's got a little bit of a greedy build, skipping the Sonya here. He has Gilius, not going to be able to get that dance break or oh, the vault breaker over the wall. Oh man, I look. That was great. Zanzara stepped forward, cut off the path with his W, preventing anybody to move. And then as Gilius tried to get out of range, the charge on the Q took was so long, he wasn't able to get over the wall. I, I must say, watching Zanzara yesterday and today, why was this guy not in LEC before, Trevor? The way he's playing is so beautiful. I'm really liking his poppy. He's doing such a great job yesterday against Malarang, today against Gilius. And while, if you look at the split overall, Gilius might not have been the most impressive in the past weeks. It's been amaz amazing. So the yeah. fact that Sansara can show up big time against these two really strong junglers, it's just beautiful. It really is. Surtis is going to steal away Zanzara's ultimate. And I've been a Zenzara enjoyer. I think those words I'll use for a, for a while. I will tell you something. He's phenomenal Poppy thus far. He has surprised both Rogue and SK thus far. We'll be able to do it again. We'll be able to do it on anything else. That's what we'll find out in the coming weeks. Misfits on the verge of a 2-0. On the verge of Goomba stomping SK Gaming. 25 minutes. All three inhibitors are under threat. The top will survive for a few seconds longer. I mean, Broxa. This is clinical. We're still in the Baron power play. 30 seconds left. Two inhibitors down. Nine towers to one. This has been a very one-sided game. And frankly, a, a very good-looking couple of games for Misfits as you look ahead to the end of summer, as you look ahead to playoffs. I'm just standing here thinking how on earth I predict the Misfits to lose this. Like, what on earth is going on? But here we go. There's a big team fight. And Gilius is the one that's in trouble. We'll be able to get the cease and desist. Dragon Descent comes forward. That's one for Revelopers. A bounce back. Jernax, he steps forward, rooted in place, goes golden. While that's happening, Neon is running amok with the help of VTO. They managed to push back too. Tertus is dead, Jernax to follow. Mercer gets in and breaks the kill streak. 1011, 408, 715. It is a stomp in every meaning of the word. Misfits have crushed SK to pick up their seventh win. A couple more hits will take down the next ascent. A couple more hits will take down the next ascent. <laughs> This is just flexing on them! Misfits take down SK! You know, while, while it didn't work out in the game, so I love it. A little, oh. a, a little bit, uh, you know, sad we don't get the pike, but I really like the Lulu here from Trimpy. Trimpy has shown time and time again he's so good in Enchanters, and now. Sure, you can look for a place. Sure, you burn the summoners, but now it's going to haunt you for a while. Oh, man. Dayon Zerse jumping onto Maorang. He's in so much trouble. The Pillar of Filth gets thrown up in that OG skin. One last auto. And evening. So potential engaging and playing mind games here with Comp and Trimby. And Zerse will just get spotted out. But here comes Larson. Weaver's wall will be used. Yonghun is caught out. No flash, remember, from the early engage. And Rogue on the board. That was a great... We're nine minutes in. Tower's not really under a huge amount of pressure. But with Herald secured, Dragon secured, it starts to feel like around about this time. They so put Rogue... themselves in a situation where Rogue's spot lane wasn't able to follow. Unfortunate part being that GP ult isn't up yet, so they can't really clear out the top wave. Ooh, nice battle by Yonghun. Tempered fate into the binding. Okay, that will be able to help. No, there's no minions left. There's no minions for Rogue. They haven't been able to secure top. Who gets it first? It will be secured here by Astralis. So huge win, Broxa. I like the idea by Astralis a lot. But the play just didn't work out the way they wanted it to, because their idea was to shift their bot lane back down to get, you know, the advantage. It's now finally with the team, but they don't have the same control. No, they it. don't. It's a little bit more even. And, and also, did you see the vision toggle there from our observers? Rogue, they could have punished, but they didn't know. They didn't have vision on Chachi. They were looking into the darkness. They played with maybe two of them, you know, pick potential with the Talia. Go, Shelly, go! Hey, there we go. Thank you, Berlin. This is, I also love hex gates for teams that need to flank. Because look at this! Odo Wamne is being completely surrounded. All the buttons are pressed. That danger man props. They have the ball right now. They just need to shoot it into the net and score. And Rogue, without that much engage, is going to have a little bit of a tricky time finding this opportunity. But let's see how it goes. That Weaver's Wall will at least slow down any support. Dragon secured. That's number two. Chachi will be jumped on. Odo finds the kill. It is at the expense of a dragon. 
So stacking up those late game options. And again, the observers highlighting the vision. I really, really like that. Rogue not willing to, um, uh, uh, Rogue not afraid to push into it. And now Odo is in trouble. Don't step forward, don't step forward. Minino is gonna get slapped by Brad. Kabi stepping forward, teleports being channeled as well. Oh no, oh no, Cyclone will knock up Lawson. Flash forward from Zerse. He goes golden with a stopwatch and the Pillar of Filth will slow down Malrang. That's Lawson's done. next to fall, teleport into death. Malrang and Trimbio now running for their lives. Com stepping forward, Moonlight Vigil is available. Magical journey into the Hex Gate. Dayor arrives to save and finish the day. He gets tagged up, chases forward, forces up the dash from Comp. He uses the Gale Force. And to try to help their friend in the top lane, and as a result, oh. almost all of them die. They lose the Baron, and Astralis are in such a great position. Oh, is it not again. again. He's not again. basing. Can they stop? It's they surely can. He it's does have flash again. available. It's happening again! Broxel literally crouched down like he was hunting, and Oda one makes drunk. Look at the sun. Cosmic Binding connects! All of a sudden, Copy stepping forward on the hunt's available tomb. Does he fire the trigger? No. Instead, he doesn't even need it. Maran gets a chomp down and a subjugate to buy time. By the way, by the way, level 13 on Xerxes Wukong to level 10 on Maorang's Trundle. I do need to take a look at the total game gold here brought to you by Santander and wait for the animation. Kobe, Comp, Xerxes, Chachi and Dayo on the top five. I mean, that is as one game from start to finish, all the way starting from Melrang being abused for his level two gang. Yes. They took that one mistake yes. and they've absolutely taken over from that point. And that's exactly what we want to see. It's these small things that, you know, showcase that you're a great team. I'm going to clarify the joke I'm about to make may not be the most politically correct. But if you'd said to me last week after G. Look at Dea right now. Dea is just pushing top, hitting the tier two right now. Rogue knows they have to go for the all in and they sure do. They do, they get the kill, Broxa. Flash engage from Odo, but the tower is secured top. Okay, Astralis cross mapping, if I can say that, the dragon will be conceded only the second of the game. Teleport being used as well. That's another uh, investment to two. 9,000 gold advantage for Astralis. Barrels thrown out, Trimby gets blown up. Comp is now firing on all cylinders. Chachi's gonna be in trouble. Pillar of Filth comes up, Comp running for his life. Here comes Dayo, he's been able to recall. The Orb of Deception flies forward, but won't find the kills. Finally, that's one back. Rogue have got the dragon, but they've lost two. They're about to lose three. They're about to lose four. Broxit happened again. They are chasing Astralis so hard and being punished for it. This time around. This time around, they may be a bit more optimistic. 6,000 HP, 3,000 HP. We That's, the use. That's it. Tempid Fate comes down. Marang is locked in a golden statue. And I mean, that was just a beautiful Baron take. Yeah, on our Young Hoon for that ult. Because the problem is, if Young Hoon doesn't land that ult, then all of a sudden it's gonna get awkward again. What are they gonna get do? Are awkward. they gonna 50 50? <laughs> are they gonna, you know, are they gonna leave? But Young Hoon. Vampire yes. play is now activated. Minions surging through the middle lane. Bottom and top also pushing towards Rogue. So Astralis, I think, are in a good position here to take advantage of the Baron Empowered Minions. Now the top lane tower is under pressure. I mean, I'm very impressed. I'm looking at this as a potential another upset win. Another loss for Rogue. Three on the trot. That's what's on the cards. Look at that. Five members. All the carries outshining Rogue. I mean, Broxa. This is just great control from Astralis as they've got the inhibitor. And the problem for Rogue is that they just have no way of engaging no. and starting fights. There's nothing they can do being in this position. Astralis just runs in. Now, the Megana is coming out. Well, the Omni does have flash. That is their one chance. But Astralis is also aware do of it. that. They do should it. be respecting. This do is going to be hard for the Omni. He does he go for it. it. But he only got Young Hoon. None of the damage dealers. None of the carries. None of the problem solvers, but Comp is low, Trimby is low, Dayo needs to close it up. So gets the Cyclone, here comes Chachi. One, two, three, foul. For a moment, for a moment, it looked like it was going to work. But Astralis closed it out and they're on the base. They've won the game. That is pure desperation from Rogue going for that play. That it's such a low chance of that working. Going all in under support with Sivir just hitting for free from the back line. But all in all, what a horrible game from Rogue, but at the same time, such a clean snowball from Astralis. The story of this game is simple. Rogue make a play, Astralis answer, punish, and win. Astralis take down Rogue. That was a very professional game. 71% win ratio, and Finn's answer into the Gwen is going to be that Jax. 
Okay, both compositions, what do you make? I like this a lot. I love me. watching that as well when there's a bit of a surprise. Alioya, level two, he hasn't uh, leveled up just yet. Pillar of Ice is available. Mickey's already flashed. He's locked behind the championship trophy. First blood unforgiven on the Draper. But worth noting that last game we saw a Trunt level two gank that essentially led to Rogue losing the entire game. And now, Sure, we get the level 2 gang. Sure, it works. We get the kill on the Draven. Flash. But now Makun is ready on the other side. He's looking for the play. He channels the Ooh. Hex as he goes over the wall. This is going to be a trigger one for Armut. Heroic charge, heroic charge into the wall. And the kill was taken away. Not done yet. Patrick's underneath the tower. Forced to flash. Ignite burning 100 HP. Which is a big part of why this can happen. So props for him for securing that. And now we're looking at Makun who doesn't have flash. Oh, he does it. Gold card. Flash forward. Chomp. Frozen domain is up. The King Kaiser himself, Zenith plays forward, and you are not forgiven. Broxa, would you say that uh, Mad Lions struck first? Finn opted into that and lost. That was very aggressive, Finn. That was a, a pretty... Pretty bad, pretty, pretty yeah, punishing, yeah. pretty pretty difficult. Makun flashes for his life. Niski goes forward. The heroic charge by some time. Aqua Prison locks down. Niski had Mad Lions gone too far. Stand aside as Unforgiven steps forward. Level four. Whoo, bounces back one for one. But I think crucially, Patrick was the one that picked up the kill. Ebb and flow. That's a flash forward. It's the Draven shield damage. of Daybreak. Flash forward. Oh. Not used just yet. Unforgiven keeps picking up those spinning axes. Two kills, two assists for Kaiser as Nuketak has been able to back and recall. Look at that damage! Oh my Just word! Taking over that bot lane, chipping away that turret, and this is the point where we're gonna have to see oh. Excel shining! <laughs> and with that, <laughs> what are these top laners doing, Trevor? Know. What is going on? I don't know, it's not over yet! Broxa, what is going on in this game? I'm gonna say donates uh, reply to Finn after Finn donated one to Armut. And the Aqua Prism will go up. The culling is channeled. Destiny and Gate. And now all of a sudden the damage comes out. Whirling death. Unforgiven picks up another. Ayoya gets the eighth. That is a five and a half thousand gold lead. All right, Nukta, what can you do? Shut down there as Malkum picks up that onto Kaiser. Niski drops as well. Ayoya's next to fall. And ladies and gentlemen, get your ham out because we're going ham this game. We are starting, so Niski and Niski has no flash available. The Poppy is going to be so strong in this scenario. Smacks him into the wall, Finn follows up, Makun just tanks. Just easy, Gold Card comes out, does he get a reply? Nope, not enough tower damage yet. Just out of range in time. Look at the top lane though. Uh, Draven with both flash as well as exhaust. And that Q from Mickey was gigantic. Ayoya is not done yet. Zenith Blade goes forward. No tidal wave available. And the two of them just brute force that. Ah, this is not working out too well for Mickey. We saw it on his Janna last weekend. I think it was the Enchanters. Yes. He's getting caught a lot. He's dying a little much, but to his credit, it is a difficult position playing into the Draven Leona as an Enchanter being this far, far behind. All of a sudden, we see Unforgiven in the 1v2. Ooh, Nukta gets the kill. That's a, sh that's a big shutdown. That Poured into the play with Twisted Fate while Finn is stuck bottom, having no TP available. Finn is now working on the enemy red buff, looking for it while a fight happens. Stops your needlework is out. Nuketak's done well, but the reply from Armut, the reply from Armut! The dash pulls with execution! It's a one for one! Oh, Armut landed. Oh. Fiesta at this point. Broxa, this is the happiest of happy games that I have seen. And we've been talking a lot about both teams as the Whirling Death comes up. Mickey, no, no, you are not able to fight. But the turnaround, XL managing to get one back. That's another down onto Unforgiven. Ayoya stepping forward, lead backwards away. Solar Phil is used perfectly. Nuketuck arrives to the fray. Finn is already down. Two members of XL finish another to fall. Two for two. And I'm going to show your mentality, how you play the game. So, think about communication. I am pretty certain I know... 10 exactly. death power spikes. <laughs> and when he gets that, it's like, you know, slowly building up for that Exodia. Now we see it again. He goes for the 8 <laughs> death, secures it in just a moment, actually flashes out. No, Niski no. comes in, yes. get that death. Boom, taken down. One step closer to the 10 deaths. Broxa, you are so optimistic. Nuketak joins the fray. He's now looking for a kill into Niski Unforgiven. He's going to chase Markun out. Markun's going to be able to use that steadfast presence, but does get taken down. And unfortunately, while 
Mickey really wants to die some more this game. He manages to take his teammate down with him. Not ideal for X. Zero reason to believe that they know how to snowball with this Draven. <laughs> he got so far ahead so early into the game. They haven't played around him in any way possible. It feels like they barely have an AD carry, which doesn't make any sense to me. But hopefully soon enough, they will set that Draven up. For now, once Makoon comes back in the map, Maybe they can look to set up Baron. Hard for them to, you know, get yep, the... Makun can come over the wall. Wait, Patrick's finding some damage with the help of the tower. Solar Flare comes out, cleansed and flashed. Whirling dead. Can it be pulled backwards? It's inside the Nexus. The tower will fall. And both teams have slowed down their play. Nuketuck now fancying himself a shot. So challenging inside that hallowed mist. Dashing forward. Teleport being used. Is there enough burst? Below 300, 150. Nuketuck blows up on... They seem happy to take down the mid tier one. Securing that turret is always really key because it helps open up the map. And once you get a moment of mid prior, you can actually push in a little bit deeper. XL sends Finn down to solo dragon. No one from Atlantis is going to be ready to respond. Of course, Niski is pushing on the other side. And here, Matt, they just have to regain control. Yeah, they really do. I don't... Oh, the dragon's not finished. Um... Drop down to two and a half, does Finn actually is going to just donate this one over? That's a big mistake from yeah. Excel. They thought they would have time to go for it, but ridiculous. But both teams do have pretty decent scaling. We oh. see them looking oh. for the play on Makoon, but they're going very oh. deep into the enemy jungle. Don't chase too far, don't chase too far, don't chase too far. Oh, chase too far, chase too far. Excel trying to turn around. No damage from the culling. That literally did nothing. Admittedly, a lot of people sidestepped. Is there a re-engage opportunity? Nuketuck stepping forward. Finn has got the teleport. Their mandate was Imperial. And Armour will pop his golden trinket. Uh, Finn, however, is about to make it to the tower. Gold card. Here we go, that's sushi. step number eight. Secure. Number eight on the cards. Two away from the power spike. Thank you for Jax. I don't think we can hear it as... Yes! Oh, that was just for me. That was literally just that. for me. Thank you. That but is amazing. While Finn's in the bottom lane, the rest of Mad Lion starting the Baron. Teleport coming in. Mickey's down for another 15 seconds. Makun is low. Has flash available to him. Kaiser goes forward. Nuketuck is chunked out. No ultimate from Unforgiven. Follow Unforgiven. Finn is locked in place. Leaps over to a ward. Flash forward from El Yoya. Chomped, snipped, cut. No needles just yet. He escapes. Finn escapes. Now, Mad Life, do they go back to Baron? Finn tries to be the raid boss. Goes in for the 1v5. And while being a big jack, not quite enough at the level where he can do that yet. As a result, oh. Excel, unfortunately for them, has to give up the Baron. And Mad Lions, while playing really sloppy macro this game, does get the LP active for themselves. Excel on the other side gets the Dragon. I mean, second Dragon apiece is now 6k, 5k gold lead. Um, with the ability to push those side lanes, please look at that. Full build at 32 minutes. He cannot get any stronger, theoretically. There it is, Trevor. There it is, the moment Destiny. we've been waiting for. Nine. The death number nine. We are so close. <laughs> We haven't seen too much of it. With Mickey down once more, with the Baron empowered minions on this Red Bull Baron power play, they're going to extend at 3,600 gold. Minion wave up top is not really a threat, and the teleport's being brought forward. So, XL, do they lose the inhib? It feels like they might. Frankly, as long as they can control the other lanes, this will funnel much even. Yeah, junglers are about on par. I think Unforgiven, obviously two levels up, is one of the biggest. Is XL going to jump onto armor? That's immune. That's immune. Pillar of Ice comes forward. It's Mickey. That's dead. Ten. 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 Now no, XL needs to survive long enough. Patrick's firing out the culling, but it's only going into the minions. Two members are down. Nobody from Mad Lions is finished. Now, Broxa, they need Mickey to respawn to use this power spike. And it looks like Mad Lions are going to push forward. No more Baron Puff, uh, but they Trevor, don't need it. I am so excited right now. What Mickey is doing here is beautiful. Few players have the talent <laughs> to achieve 10 deaths in a professional team. But he did it. He managed to do it. And soon, they just need him to spawn so he can carry his There's team from no here. There's no ways. There's no ways you're that prophetic, Broxa. Finn stepping all the way forward. Kaiser gets jumped on. He looks for Nuke Duck. Finn is down. Patrick flashes for his life. Here comes Mickey. Can he save the Nexus? The Nexus is being focused. A couple more shots. Armored for the kill. It's the not enough. It's not enough. Mad Lions take down XL. The 10 death power spike will not turn it around. Braum in particular can offer is while BDS don't have the strongest engage, uh, I think that when you look at the poke comp that they've decided to go for more of, it just adds to that disengage. It does mean and the tier starting to stack up. Syngraf was spotted here on this ward. He will recognize that he has been hit. The minion will tank up 
the trouble bubble as Hillisang's finally on a bit of a roam on the Nautilus flash over by Ooh. Razork. Means that Nucleon's got nowhere to go, and he'll be sent to the gray screen. So that was a really good roam from Hillisang. We expected this type of movement to come from him, and he really didn't have to do much aside from show his presence, but Fnatic want to take more. Yeah, they want to take more. Razork now with the company of Hillisang. It's going to be a jungle support 2v2 here. Syncroft's kind of saying, all right, cool, thanks, Limit, I'm out. And he's going to try running, running away as Humanoid was going to make it a bit of a 3v2 affair. Ezreal and Braum is a very difficult bot lane to really dive. He's going to go for the Q. Ooh, he could have. close, it could have been. But Aggressivo may have overextended here, so it's going to uh, pop the ultimate. Oh no, Aggressivo. Not the time to be using your ultimate. He's not even going to use his flash. He knows he is dead to rights, and that's going to be Fnatic getting upset. A nice little kill. Yeah. Support each other limit, though. Might be a little bit isolated here. The Weaver's Wall is going to come out to try and stop him from getting away. But now Humanoid's away from the rest of his team as the exhaust has to come down. The concussive blows on top of the Glacial Fisher is going to force Humanoid to flash away. You can see now Hillisan kind of left there. It's actually upset got caught out, and his health bar deleted. And that's Nuclear Inc. getting a kill. They're going to stun down as Max Maddy is feeling confident as Razork now very close to going down, Nuclear and finds the paddle start. Oh, obviously, because he completely in, but Shelly gets to do her favorite thing in the world. It's going to be a trade of top tower for that dragon. That's second dragon of the game now here for the side Sleep of... Sleep onto him. And this is the thing, the Gragas does a lot of damage, but he is very squishy in the early stages of the game. He will get blown up by a, a, a Zoe Q or even a uh, an Ezreal with enough kind of stacked up. And this is just BDS brute forcing in this bot side. It kind of saying, look, to back himself away a little bit from it. But you can see Fnatic, they're not willing to let this one go because it would mean priority in that mid lane for this third dragon. And here we go, full fight going to happen right on the back fight of this Herald fight kind of coming in. The good hammer to keep them away. The Braum has gone down. Aggressivo can't do much against Wonder. That Shelly's still going. And they're going to have some decent bursts on oh. Razork. He does have the flash after using the smite for some extra health. Then they get flash on the bat. It's so scrappy. So all over the place. But Fnatic are the ones coming out on top. Very scrappy fight from BDS. Especially when you're looking at a server on the other side. And look, BDS is actually first in the river. This makes it very hard for Fnatic to approach. Oh, oh. unless they do that. Unless you get caught these flicks from Humanoid have been fantastic. There's going to be the ultimate from the server to try and speed everyone up. Shelly will be able to get the bo belly boob off, and another flick back means that Nuclear Int is dead. That's a double kill coming out now for Wonder. Fnatic, they're building that momentum we talked about. They're building up some movement to try and make sure this game can be a win for them, and they're starting to get some good results from the play. Fnatic are finding pick after pick, and they're looking a lot more confident on the rift. BDS are very quickly falling apart, and they were in a good position. Forcing Fnatic to walk into them was the best way to utilize their poke, but Humanoid with a really good pick onto Limit is really able to find another knockup off the back of Hillisang's stun. Hilly here. It, it is just expected that they will be there at the top, especially in the of Europe as four seeds. But here we go, Fnatic looking to try and make the mark in this fight. Limit's been isolated away from his team, and rocks are better than ice. That they are. Fnatic find themselves another pick. They force x Maddy off the play, and now they're looking to siege onto this mid-tier two. They have the Dragon spawn in a minute's time as well, but Fnatic can secure it afterwards. Yep, they get the tier two. That's going to open up more of this. Choke point, but Razork happy to pop down the Pillar of Ice and... Uh, Back himself away, the flick back not quite there. Synchrop jumps straight on the Humanoid, but a pixel perfect cleanse right off the back of it. A nuclear end. He is not having a fun time in this series right now. He is just getting absolutely bopped about the place. Razork not quite done with the fight yet. Synchrop could go for a steal. Razork's very, very low, needs to be very careful. Wonder gets yeeted across, across the map as Fnatic's Humanoid tries to just kind of do the damage. The TP from Wonder on the back side of this one, though, will definitely be a bit of a surprise for BDS. The Dragon's reset. Aggressivo flashes a Immediately, Limit and Sinkrob are running for the hills. It's a double kill for the side of the Sivir. Everyone is falling to the wayside. I think BDS, that could have been your last chance saloon. BDS get wiped off the map as Fnatic secured themselves an ace. Just gives that extra little bit of a threat to the side of Fnatic. You know, you have got the AP damage, but also it's just strong into a lot of meta tops right now. Just well into Gwen, just well into Nar. All the Gs in the top side, Gwen, Nar, Gragas, they're all pretty damn good. As we can see, another minion flying across the map, but these Keeper's Verdicts have not been the most uh, convincing of Verdicts I've ever seen in my life. They'll finally join back in saying, hello, lads, sorry about that. Very, very sorry about the slight interruption, but uh, I will say for Limit, something that we haven't seen him use, a little interaction, he can put the wall up to try and block the Talia wall, the unbreakable, and kind of stop it from giving a full cutoff, but just hasn't really been in a position to do that. It's been very much a focus on keeping his life going, and the life of BDS, it's fading fast, Benny. It certainly is. 
They will be eliminated from playoffs. They will not have an opportunity to compete with the best the Euros has to offer. It's been a difficult season for BDS, but Fnatic, they do not care. They want to bounce back. They want to secure themselves a win. And with the Nexus in their eyes, they're looking to end the game right here, right now. And you've got Ego Silo trying to come back to his team, but you've already lost two of your inhibitors. You're off. But another tower goes down in favor of Fnatic. All right, BDS, you got to go out in a glaze of glory. You can't just be a death of a thousand cuts. And what you have built up shall be yours. There's going to be Ego Silo using his ultimate defensively and the Glacial Fisher as well coming out here from BDS. So not quite able to get those big engage ultimates out for themselves. The Nexus being pounded right now. They're being pulled left, right, and center. They need to make a decision, Benny. Things are just falling apart for BDS. All three inhibitors have now dropped. Fnatic. Well, they look to disengage. Perhaps. Nope, they're going to fight. They're going in again. Aggressivo gets flicked back as well. Wonder has found x -Mani, but x -Mani flashes away. Humanoid, though, does not want him to live. Aggressivo has already fallen. x -Mani trying to see if he can dodge this one out, but that is not going to be possible there. Natalia is just too damn strong. And finally, Fnatic will find themselves a win and go one and one in this week and start to bring themselves back into playoff contention. A much needed win for Fnatic, because not only do they have a lot of disengaged tools, but they have a lot of ways to navigate this dive comp that G2 have drafted for themselves, because with the dash from the Ari, with the teleport, well, uh, well with the, the teleport scuttle crab, so, Hang on, I say that. LeBrov actually looking for a dive in mid lane. Charmed and disarmed in the mid lane there as Perks has got a decent, decent bit of damage. Caps trying to see if he can flick back Haru, who flashes away after tanking up actually nothing whatsoever. They're just toying with him underneath the tower. LeBrov finally comes in. Perks is looking for a roam up towards top. Yeah, doesn't have ult, but doesn't need it. Broken Blade so far pushed up here. Does land the Flawless Doulette. That doesn't mean, though, you do not have yourself a stun to try and stop this one here. I think Broken Blade knows it. He's probably almost certainly going to be going down. You need to be careful, oh. though. Still need to land some of these abilities here as Perks. Still has got himself a little bit of movement speed there with the W. Lands the Flawless Duet. Flash in. They're going to try and get him down. He's trying to turn it back. They had to do, use a lot more time. Uh, yesterday, we praised them for their strong early game, and we're seeing it once again today. They have advantages top. They have advantages mid, and the bot lane... Are we very aware that he can't have, has no vision? Broken Blade, no flash, remember. Oh, good pillar. Good, very good pillar. Alfari has not used the ultimate just yet, though. As you can see, Broken Blade being slowed down. Nowhere to go, and he is going to be taken out, donated to the Alfari top. We talked about this, trying to continue shutting this Irelia down. G2 have sent members to respond. Here comes Caps with the ult. Yeah, they're going to try and make this one work with the Weaver as well. The Disrupt of Tyrell does get popped down, but you can see now already the damage coming in. Alfari forced to use ultimate. There's a hostile takeover, but a four-man knockup here from Targaris' ultimate means that Vitality are a little bit scattered. They can't fully commit to the tower just yet, but they have a minion wave. It finally falls down, so now your security is gone, G2. Targamus running away from Haru, who eventually says, right, you live for another day. You've got three members up here. Black is just not even joining it. He's PVE. So this is going to be a 5v4 at best here for G2. These health bars are going low, and Broken Blade is getting stacked up. They're going to try and go in the bailout. It's not good enough. There's Haru following, and finally Broken Blade goes down at the two-for-one trade. Not quite able to get the execution with the Heartbreaker. Caps goes golden, but it's only to delay the inevitable. A double kill comes in for LeBron. And Vitality finds at this point. You think, oh, they can run away with it. But then the resurrection comes through from the broth to buy him a little bit more time. How, how they want to play as a, as a unit. Remember that Europe does have four seeds at Worlds this year. And the higher yourself, the Kraken Slayer. And he's going to now be one of the primary win conditions for G2. Uh, Targumus goes in, but uh, the rest of G2 were not ready. Nope. And that's just going to be a very easy kill oh, donated over to Perks. They so that we way. have seen picker throws this weekend uh, <laughs> coming in as we... Uh, See Shelly finally get to come in onto the mid lane, but there's going to be a fight off on the side here, so Alfari's going to have to try and bounce away. As we can see now, Haru a little bit separated, the hostile takeover, only going to land really onto Yanko, so they're going to be able to try and take down Alfari as well. While this is happening though, you do have Perks who TP'd in for that kill on top side, kind of just pushing in. Shutdown does go over though to G2, and Shelly gets to do two head bops. And that keeps her happy and safe. Well, not Perhaps. safe, she's dead. Does get charmed. Well, speaking of another person going to be dead there, you can see now Perks trying to see if he can make this one work, but uh, Caps, good flash over the wall, but you've got so much mobility here on the Ari. So difficult to get away once they actually land the CC. And Perks able to kill his former teammate. I was worried. 
the Ari into Talia matchup can be difficult because of that stun, but you saw Perks dash through the stun and say, I don't care. My yeah, teammates are kind of unperturbed, being, keeping all ah, that pressure coming so in. They're actually going to use this to convert it into a tier two in the mid lane, transition that into the bot side jungle, steal away all these camps. Very well played. Targum is taking a fair bit of damage, but they've cleared the wave. So, yes, you do lose the tier two in mid. It is traded for a tier one, but Charm lands. It's going to be a pretty common sight for Caps right now. He's really not been winning out on this matchup in mid as Perks really starting to put down the hearse. And honestly, you, you, you can't walk forward without vision because you will just get bursted out. I mean, I have to say that the jungle gap this game has been so massive. That single attempt from Yankos in the bot lane was just so massive in terms of the impact of the game because of what Haru was able to do off the back of that. The repeated 20 game. minutes in the game could be huge. Here we go, Yankos. Ooh. He's a little bit too late to the trigger. And he's damaged there. So we can see, ooh, Yankos on got onto the back of the pit. Now by Tamalito. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They don't know where they need to go. And you can see them, they're scattered. They're kind of bringing this one. Flabrov flashes over. Haru tries to kill him off as well. But we can see Caps is already dead. Flackett now trying to be the carry here. And he shotguns himself onto the backside. Perks, though, has got so much mobility. It's so difficult. Yankos has been exhausted. And Perks picks up a double. The hostile takeover is good, but not good enough to try and keep Vitaly in this fight. Flackett, you are the man. You have to be the reason G2 stay in this. But this too much in by Tatalee's wallet, and they are slapping. And look to secure a big win over G2. Let's have a look at this fight, because it's very scattered, but Yanko's does oh, see who's the stopwatch, because uh, very telegraph positioning there. You can put the seismic shove underneath it, but it does keep the pressure on top of G2. They are starting to uh, utilize a lot of these used flashes, though, as Haru taken very, very low, and Vitality, they're not quite as clean as they were about five minutes ago. This is getting a little bit scrappy. Oh, Perks, Ooh, oh. he had an exit plan. That's a that's, uh, very Perks play style. He loves to play on the edge. He's looking for every opportunity that he can. The poke continues to come down from Kazi. Oh, Targamus. Oh! Once again, he gets away with no health. But Vitality, that should be enough to get the siege. The problem is they don't have a wave right now. They're going to rotate up towards top, but there are minions getting in the way. So G2, they're holding strong for now. Yeah, this is a Red Bull Baron power play that is uh, doing well, but not as well as you would expect for a team that is... Uh, 10,000 gold ahead. As we can see, Dragon spawning in 16 seconds. They want to try and go for it, but Haru's been caught. You can see Caps now trying to make this one work, but he's just deleted. Little bit of CC, and he's got nowhere to go. Burn it down and get themselves a the Hexol regardless. So, G2, do you go and try and go for a Hail Mary? They jump onto Labrov, who flashes away. He will end up going down. No, he won't, because he's got the bailout. And this is Vitality slaughtering G2. There's nothing to be done. G2 have been routed and thoroughly spanked in this game. Vitality dominate the fight once again. 17 kills to two. 12k the gold lead. An absolute stomp from Vitality as they look to move into tied second place. Pretty sure that's the first, or maybe even the second Weaver's Wall I've seen from Caps Old game. He has had, he has been muted, invisible to the entirety of this game. And right now he is the only one standing between between Vitality and a win against G2. It will take down LeBron, the big shutdown going over to the side of Caps, but is it enough? Your base is in tatters. It won't be the end of the game just yet, but it's Zero is. and five. He is looking to end this game deathless as he will get a big win. Not over quite his able former to, team. Cap's gonna be able to cleanse there. Perks goes golden with the Zanyas. We can see now Haru trying to keep everybody away. They do get down Targamus, but the not quite able to get the Heartbreaker down. It's gonna be G2 breaking their own hearts. Everyone is going to fall. Nobody will die on the side of Vitality. And G2 have been beaten, bruised, and Vitality will stand victorious as they take down the MSI representatives. Vitality with a monumental win will move to eight wins, they will move into second place and they will shut down G2.